Good morning, everybody. Um, I trust you're all tuned in, and uh, welcome to another instalment of the uh, ITI Tim Speck webinar series. Today, we're talking about uh, weatherboard selection and giving tips on, um, you know, what things you should think about uh, and what you should be looking for when specifying the best um, the best solution for your project. Choosing a cladding for a building can be one of the most uh, important design decisions of any build. And not only will it give the building its distinctive and signature look, but also will provide one of the most critical roles uh, in a structure. And of course, in providing a weather type protective skin to your building. Uh, this is a design decision you should not take lightly. And um, when, you know, Although we know many architects will often spend hours comparing profiles, color options, materials, and species, we want to make sure that we can you know, assist you by providing you with the information you need so you can make an informed decision uh, for which cladding option will best suit your specific requirements for each project. Because you know, they are all different and they all need different certain things uh, to, uh, you know, to suit it. Um, there are plenty of options. Um, with regard to um, cladding selection, and New Zealand definitely has a love affair with weatherboards and timber. Um, we have one of the highest proportions of timber cladding usage uh, for residential homes, certainly compared with Europe in the UK, but also much higher than Australia, who tend to use more brick. Uh, so how do you narrow it down? You know, what, there, there's so many options out there and they all have their benefits, they all have their, uh, their, their drawbacks as well, um, and their limitations. But what what things should you be looking for um, when you know when choosing the best? There are many factors that will influence um, your uh, your decisions, ranging from the overall concept, the aesthetics you're trying to achieve, uh, colours and combinations with other uh, cladding types, as well as some potentially restricting physical factors, such as you know the site location, uh, the exposure, uh, northerly aspect. You know how much solar radiation is the building going to uh, going to absorb, uh, and local conditions such as you know the wind zone, um, the humidity, um, the the rain or the or the um, how dry the environment is, um, and whether it's in a sea spray zone, okay, uh, or it could be in a high alpine uh, environment. So in line with the current building criteria in the New Zealand Building Code, timber weatherboard must meet a durability requirement of only 15 years. And no um, architect or owner I know embarks on a project with the expectation that their weatherboards or their cladding may need replacement after 15 years. Uh, and they also need to bear in mind that some, um, some cladding types, uh, uh, you know, uh, their warranties only actually go for this minimum 15 years. Um, so choosing the cheapest option uh, can sometimes make, be a false economy and may not be the best option medium or long term. So if correctly um, installed and selected and maintained, then the right cladding can give an unlimited service life. Uh, it would be fair to say that the biggest influence on choosing cladding that we see is definitely price. Uh, and we know that the cost of the cladding uh, is, look, it's a serious chunk of money. And although the budget is usually front of mind for most clients and it's something to be, you know, that's something that's very, very important, we hope that price is not the only deciding factor. Um, there are numerous components we believe that must also be considered and are vital in helping you make the right choice. So what are the client's expe expectations? They may want a, a low maintenance cost effective option, in which case price will definitely be key. However, if they are after a higher spec, more detailed aesthetic or experiencing um, a long, long term, you know, um, uh, performance and that sort of thing, then other factors will come into play. Okay, um, are they just after a, a simple, you know, residential home uh, or a simple beach house? Is it a large commercial build? Or, you know, a public space such as a school or library? Okay, as designers um, and architects, you will already have a concept for each particular project, driven initially, obviously, by the brief, and then depending on what you and your client want to achieve will heavily influence your selection choice. So some timber species and substrates have a high degree of design flexibility, while others are a little more limited uh, in their applications. So I guess the first thing we need to establish 
is um, what do you want to achieve with the build and what is the end use, okay? Because they will actually be quite key in deciding. Um, let's discuss the benefits of a few species uh, and I will, but I'll be mainly focusing on obviously the ones that we deal with here at ITI TimSpec. Um, I, if I don't mention ones that you are considering, other species or other substrates, um, I apologize for that. But look, I'll just talk about what, what we know best here. Uh, so let's go through a few species. For a low cost home um, or development, say of affordable homes or uh, group home builders who are probably looking for something a little more uh, standard and off the shelf, so hence a little more cost effective, um, but is it still a well established and trusted uh, timber, um, but something that still provides enough design scope uh, to create something unique, then in these situations, we commonly see cladding such as um, radiator pine. And here we use uh, CCA treated radiator pine, finished with a light colored paint finish, okay? I'll go into the paint thing a little bit more in detail shortly, but that is quite key here. Um, this solution provides a relatively straightforward, um, but still a distinctive look, you know, we think. Radiator pine um, is a mainstay in the New Zealand forestry scene and fast growing, sustainable and renewable resource. But as we know, in its natural state, it's not uh, a durable timber, okay? So it's a cheap, fast growing, um, renewable resource, but we need to do something to it to increase the durability and the expected lifespan. Um, there are a number of different you know, options with regard to treatment types. And not all treatments are created equal too. That's something we need to point out. There are vast differences in the longevity, performance and effectiveness of these processes. And you need to weigh up the option that will best suit you know, your project as well as the budget, but also the long-term performance expectations, okay? Um, here at ITI TimSpec, we stock uh, a non-finger joint clears grade pine that's um, a H3.2 CCA treatment level uh, and we do that in a number of different profiles of the standard ones being the bevelback, shiplap, rusticated styles which are you know, fairly um, popular use in New Zealand and these go out always as pre-primed and undercoated um, with the option of a top coat also applied. Uh, but finished, um, you know, in a, in a light colour, okay? It's a fairly competitive cladding with regard to cost, uh, but there are restrictions on profile size that we can achieve with radiator pine and profile style sometimes, and also the finish colour that we allow radiata to be painted, okay? This is quite a key point now. The minimum LRV or light reflectance value uh, that we permit for radiator pine is 45%, which is sounds relatively mid-range, but you'll be surprised at how light the colors are at 45% LRV. Okay, paint finishes with an LRV lower than that, um, which means the, the, the paint will be darker and it will reflect less light, which means it's absorbing more heat and more heat from the uh, infrared part of the spectrum um, from solar radiation. So um, the boards are going to heat up essentially, okay? If they heat up, then there's going to be, um, you're asking a lot of the timber, um, how it performs. And what we see is the board will expand and then contract when it cools. And with that expansion and contraction, uh, there's a real possibility for uh, undue movement, which can cause problems. We see cupping, warping, twisting, um, and this causes the surface uh, fire, uh, film of the paints to crack, okay? Because the expansion and contraction can be so vast that it's stressing the paint film, the paints crack, moisture can get in through those cracks and affect the timber and the coating. So the moisture is getting underneath the coating now. Um, not only does it look very unsightly, but it may also un, un ultimately be a weather tightness risk. The boards could cup and move so much that they um, allow moisture to get behind the weatherboards or the, or the primary cladding. Okay, uh, certainly more, some profiles are more prone to that than others, um, and we also give advice on that. So yeah, light colors are only covered by the warranty. So if you are designing a building with a dark coated wide board shiplap, then radiata pine is not going to be one of your options, okay? And remember also that if uh, you do paint a dark, dark color, darker than the recommended LRV for any timber species, then this may uh, void the, warrant, the conditions of the warranty and may create problems when it comes time for co-compliance sign-off, for instance. Um, 
and you see in this case here, uh, the picture you're looking at, the house has a wide board um, uh, bevel back painted white in radiata pine, but the black portion there, the vertical shiplap is not radiata pine. That's actually a coir, um, which we'll get to later on. Um, but it, so they're using the combination of the two and the warranty still stands there because you've used a different species. Okay, so just bear in mind that, yeah, if the, um, if the council requests it, uh, we, uh, for any uh, durability statements or if regard to coatings, then we um, find that, you know, sometimes we're expected to sign off when the boards are coated darker. Um, it's not something we will do. And um, look, council and consenting authorities are aware of the issues with dark coatings and especially on some species and likely ask for confirmation, okay? If that confirmation is not given, there's a rural risk that co-compliance will not be um, granted and you know, no one wants that. There's nothing worse than at the end of a job, you're not getting a sign off because you've chosen a too dark a color for the species, okay? So that's something to be very, very mindful of. And most coating, uh, sorry, most um, timber weatherboard suppliers I know uh, will not um, sign off the decisions you make that are not in line with their uh, installation specifications, okay? So it's a crucial point we need to um, make clear there. No one wants the hassle of that, okay? So just be aware of it. Uh, other species that we use, um, one is uh, again uh, unique to us here is WeatherTex. Uh, it's another cost effective option, but is ideal for projects where budget is driving the decisions um, and offers a few more options with regard to finishes and profile type over radiata. Okay, WeatherTex is very, very stable. It's a very robust um, substrate produced from pulped wood fiber and compressed into various uh, board profiles and, and sheet panels. It can be painted or stained or even left uncoated to silver off naturally, okay? So um, yeah, it can just be left to weather and gives a nice effect like the photograph in front of you. Um, darker um, stains or paints are also permissible covered by the warranty on, for weather text, okay? And um, whether that be a stain or a paint, um, the whole system is um, has a backup of uh, components, accessories, and an installation manual that accompany the brands appraised systems. There's four brands appraisals for the different profiles, and um, full installation spec like this is downloadable for free off the website when you require it, depending on the pro on the system you use. Okay, the solution is very popular with a range of project types, from private residential ones um, to multi-unit, low-rise commercial projects. Uh, and um, also very popular with um, lo low cost or small lo relocatable and transportable homes because of its robust nature, but also is fairly light and also fairly cost effective, but still a range of options you can do there, okay? Um, so yeah, WeatherTex is, a, is, a, is, I guess, a, a, a very good option. Relatively, um, has been around in New Zealand for a little while, but look, it hasn't been particularly marketed. We took over the agency for that uh, late last year. So we're making big inroads with it. So yeah, a really, really nice option, uh, but it is a little bit limited on its size and, and board length because it is um, reconstituted pulp wood fiber that then then remade into boards. So it's not particularly long length spread, but you know, as long as you're um, comfortable with joins and you know, systems, then yeah, it's all, it, it produces a very, very good result, okay. For projects where the budget is a little more generous uh, and the clients are looking for something that will potentially make a little more of a statement, there are certain species that offer a little more performance, but also a bit more design flexibility with regard to um, the overall concept. Okay, Western Red Cedar is a timber that has been uh, you know, a popular choice for residential homes uh, in New Zealand for a long, long time, uh, and is still one of the more sought after species. Uh, the natural aesthetics and striking grain and color variation, coupled with a surface texture and, and warm, feeling of warmth and natural fragrance, means cedar is still a real crowd favorite in New Zealand. There's also a great deal of design scope with cedar, uh, especially when you consider the range of finishing options with regard to penetrating oils, um, waterborne stains, or of course paints as well, much less so. More we see the bandsawn face uh, with with penetrating walls and, and stains. 
Uh, obviously, um, a reasonable range of profile types as well. Uh, and as we um, know, vertical shiplap with cavity-based solutions we have these days have come right back into vogue. Uh, and there's a lot of lot of scope with that, and getting a lot of um, uh, uh, we see a lot more of that. Uh, yeah, in in various situations, but also uh, bevel back uh, is still a classic option, uh, and we're always amazed at uh, bevel back weatherboards that have been around for literally centuries. Uh, have um, still we still see you know new ways of of designing and and producing them and innovative uh, use of those those profiles. Okay. Rusticated as well. Uh, the old classic scallop shape is still popular, but we do see now the more contemporary, sharper lines um, of, of a rusticated board. Uh, again, you know, gives a really modern, um, contemporary look, uh, but still a classic weatherboard, really. Uh, and then we move on, obviously, to uh, the random vertical, uh, random width and depth stuff that we can do for both, sorry, for both vertical and for horizontal. Um, which just means that, again, we have an unlimited design scope there, endless design, um, endless combinations, uh, and coupled that with uh, different coatings and different stain finishes, you know, you can have a real unique look. Okay. Um, for most, um, because of its natural durability, sorry, Western Red Cedar um, meets minimum 15-year durability requirement uncoated or untreated. Um, however, we, along with most suppliers I know, uh, strongly recommend the application of a penetrating oil or stain to further enhance the lifespan of the timber. Sure, you can go uncoated, but you're going to meet the minimum 15-year requirement. Um, if you add in a treatment or a coating, then yes, you're going to get a longer, longer warranty period. Okay? Um, for most applied stains or oils, ongoing maintenance will also be a, uh, required uh, to ensure the cedar retains its integrity. So when cedar is coated with a recommended oil or stain, um, the coating is then maintained in accordance with the selected manufacturer's recommendations. Okay. So this uh, then warranty will extend out to you know, 20, 25 years, 30 years, depending on the maintenance requirements. Okay. Um, it, it is a very uh, light, porous timber. It's a softwood. It will take up and release moisture very easily. So as a result, we'll show expansion and contraction associated with seasonal and climatic changes. This is a normal uh, process and expected. We actually design expansion and contraction into the weatherboard profiles that we do, okay? But with the application of a penetrating oil or stain, this movement will be heavily reduced because you, the, the, the boards aren't absorbing, they're already saturated with an oil or stain, they're not absorbing as much of the uh, ambient uh, or external moisture when it rains or in climatic changes, that sort of thing. So then the boards aren't expecting, expanding and contracting as much, and hence you're reducing the stress levels and movement on the timber. Okay, so recoding and maintenance must be factored into uh, the ongoing operating costs of a build as well. Okay, so this is something that can be overlooked, certainly at the beginning of a project when comparing cladding types. Okay, sometimes people don't always factor in the ongoing maintenance costs. Uh, but it's something that is important to do um, when looking at just basic costs up front, okay? Uh, for residential builds, it may not be a big implication, but for some commercial builds using Western Red Cedar, um, and especially in public spaces or, or retail or something like that, um, that every three, four or five years, you've got to scaffold that building out to recoat it, to maintain the coating, uh, then that's, there's big cost implications there, okay? So that's something that we just need to be mindful of. Okay, which we don't always um, think that has been sort of planned in. Um, a lot of clients, you know, do need to know that, and especially for commercial builds, as I say, they need to know that those costs up front. Okay. Um, the other thing which we don't recommend with cedar is the application of dark stains or, or uh, paint finishes. Okay. Um, Yes, the board will show adverse movement of a dark colour. We will definitely see that. The board, as a result of the heat absorption, will expand and contract, sometimes to a point where it's definitely aesthetically unpleasing, and we have had the occasion where it's been to a point where it's uh, become a weather tightness concern. Okay? Um, cupping, twisting, warping, due to solar heat absorption, yeah, it's definitely a thing with cedar. You'll see plenty of dark-coated cedar out there. All of it will be moving. And depending on the location and the northerly aspect, how much that movement is, 
um, you know, it, 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 as I say, can be can be a concern. So as a result, we don't warranty against the movement um, of dark coated cedar. We warranty against decay and rot, and um, the, the, so we still have to meet that 15 year requirement. But within that 15 years, if the boards move wildly on the face of the building. Um, we have already ad advised that that's going to happen, okay? So that's something that, you know, it, it's still a concern and we still see, um, but every job on its own merits, but just be conscious that cedar stained with the dark stain is still um, something to be very, very mindful of, all right? Um, where there is a desire to use uh, dark or black finishes to wear the boards, um, and, but still wanting that long-term durability, uh, there are very few options. Um, one timber that is fully warranted wing coated dark colours is Akoya, which probably a lot of you already know. Okay, this is a unique timber. Um, it's not treated in the traditional sense of the word, but instead goes through a non-toxic process called acetylation, which is a modification of the cell structure to give the timber outstanding durability and unrivaled um, stability. Okay, there's no restriction on coating type. Uh, or, or colour, and in fact, Akoya weatherboards can also be installed with no coating or left to weather off and silver off naturally over time with little or no required maintenance. Okay, Akoya is still FSC certified, okay, so the, the sourcing of the timber is, is um, all sustainable from sustainable, fast growing, renewable resources. Um, and it's also a non toxic uh, process, so not harmful to the environment. Um, or humans, the offcuts when the builders are handling it um, aren't in any way detrimental. They can be safely burned. They can actually be disposed of in, in, um, you know, without any restrictions. Okay, uh, but Akoya carries a 50 year warranty for above ground applications. So regardless of the coating type or the color as well, which is quite interesting. Um, and not just dark coatings, Akoya still looks stunning when coated other light colors as well. Um, and, um, the certainly for us we see that um you know the variation in the options uh, are there okay it's um also the other thing to point out is uh yeah it can be left uncoated as we said before and that's certainly an option we see both the boards can be put up with no coating whatsoever uh, but also can be um touched with a light silvery gray stain to give an initial weathered look and then let the natural weathering uh, take over naturally over time. So there's less of a sort of a jump between the new looking boards and the weathered boards. Um, so that's something that's certainly a popular option and it still has carries that 50 year warranty regardless of that. Okay, so here we see one that's done with a, uh, a light uh, silvery gray Woodex penetrating oil um, initially. So this is actually a new, new build. The building was only just finished at the stage. Uh, but it looks like it's been sitting out there in the weather for uh, a couple of years. So an outstanding look that we can achieve. Okay, uh, but not just dark coatings or uncoated. Uh, there's lots of variations we can do. Akoya still looks outstanding when done um, with uh, mid-range tones and colors. Okay, we can achieve um, yeah, very, very smart looks with that, with still seeing the grain texture and the uh, and everything coming through there. Um, the, uh, So, excuse me here. Uh, so yeah, different coatings and the performance of those coatings on different timbers is crucial. So we see timber species and cladding types will have a um, massive range of performance really and, um, and expected life, lifespans. And this is something that uh, needs to be factored in to the cost of the build as we said before at the beginning. So if the building requires the cladding to be replaced after 15 or 20 years, um, compared to another that will give say 50 plus years uh, lifespan, then you know it may not the cheap option up front may not be the best option long term. Okay, uh, we find this is much more likely to be considered when it's a commercial or ministry funded project, um, where ongoing and operational costs are factored into the life of the building. But we understand this is not often something that homeowners, when they're building um, their own home. Will, will consider or, or want to look at too much, okay? They're not factoring their long-term cost, they're looking at the costs now and up front. And we understand that as, you know, we're realistic about that as, as being a, a you know, a, a selection issue, okay? Uh, most of them are looking sort of one to five years down the track rather than 
20 years down the track. Um, so every look, situation is different and we understand that and needs to be assessed on its own requirements. So look, just to summarise, um, for projects where, where the boards are to have a paint finish and a light colour or an LRV of, with an LRV of 45% or higher um, with a paint finish, then all species are acceptable, okay? Um, you can select the one that best suits your requirements and budgets. And there's many more, more than what we talked about um, today. You know, there's Macrocarpa, there's Lawson Cypress, there's Larch, and there's obviously other substrates as well, like fibre cement. Um, but look, where the requirement is for darker coatings or a higher performance for a longer term, um, say up to 50 years plus, then, you know, there are lesser options out there, okay? Um, and in ensuring that the maintenance you know, is factored in or the requirement to do no maintenance, um, then you're very limited in your choices. So the Inukoya and some uh, cedar species, you know, that can be considered. So we try to give a balanced view for this and look, if people ask us, we give the options and we say, look, what are you trying to achieve with a build? What, what are you looking at? Because here are your options for weatherboards and species. Uh, and, um, you know, we will then give you advice on which one's going to work best for your situation. Um, all our Aquia, Radiata and um, Cedar species uh, are all backed by a Codemark certified cavity-based systems and all the installation specifications and construction details are free to download off our web, website. Um, but look, please feel free to hit us up uh, on that. Um, we have a vast range of, of, uh, array of other material like data sheets, information on species, durability, um, how they perform, all that sort of thing um, in greater detail. But look, most of that is, is, is available for free to download off our website. But if you want anything more, by all means, give us a call. We have a team based in Auckland and also one in Christchurch to help you with you know, your specific projects and um, whether you need samples, whether you need colours, whether you need just general information about, um, about different species and performance, or whether you're looking at specific profile types, then yeah, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Okay, um, we, we, we are here to help and we hope that we can give a more um, unbiased view than a lot of them out there because we're not pushing one thing over the other. Um, we will give a general view of, of different species. So that's really um, what we just wanted to discuss this morning. Thank you for your time. Um, and we trust you all keep busy uh, and um, everyone's, um, you know, back into uh, work and there's a bit of pipeline of work out there. Um, you know, it's it's unsettling times as we know, um, but we want to, uh, you know, just keep, keep everyone um, as happy as we can and um, keep them busy. So, um, yeah, please remember to um, keep washing your hands and keep buying local. Thank you very much.